is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. This is our wrap up. This is our Friday wrap up from Khan. This is our second and last Friday wrap up. And you can see we don't have the Khan's logo around okay. this because Friday has more material to put up than any other day. Typically. Yeah. <laughs> but the festival is winding down. So some of the things that you're going to hear from us is kind of a, shall we say, a wrap up of what's been happening. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a couple more days for the festival. And everybody's getting ready to hear. Yeah, well, they've actually, as of um, just a few minutes ago, they uh, awarded the first set of awards, which is funny because it popped up right before we started. But because what happens is, it's uh, this was probably awarded like about 10 o'clock at night. And, oh, really? Well, I would guess so, because it would be... Oh, because it just show. popped up. Yeah, and it just popped up. So it's the uh, 15th Central Foundation Award winner revealed today by Jean-Pierre D'Argent and his jury, which includes uh, uh, Arsenia Kajana, Erzan, his Armenian name, folks, and Car and, uh, Carmine Anuzu, Emmanuel Carrar, and Hugh Lacroix. Basically, uh, it consists of the 15 student films chosen out of um, nearly 320 films around the world submitted by film schools. First prize went to Dorogona, mm -hmm. The Road 2, directed by Tasha Igomasavia from Russia. That's Vikik. I don't know where mm. VGIK is in Russia. Second prize is Abigail. This one I can actually pronounce perfectly. Really? Matthew James O'Reilly. Mm. Raleigh. Yes, he's an Irishman from New York City. And the third prize, Los uh, Fetones, the host, which I don't know how that can come host. That word does not look like host to me. Mm. Directed by Miguel Angel. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mulat, basically, E I C T. Oh, that's the schools where they're at. Ah. At NYU, New York City University. Uh, so it's the School of Television in Cuba. The awarded film received 15,000 euros for first place, 11,250 for the second, and 7,500 for the third. The first prize winner gets the biggie, though. He's guaranteed that. Ah, I what? love that. It says it's guaranteed that her first feature film will be presented. That is a. Okay, uh, we got a woman in that. Man. Uh, the first Pride winner is a is a woman. So wow, do you think that they're bowing down to the pressure or that there weren't enough yeah, women? Yeah, because there weren't enough women. The other two. Okay, are women. so they're being politically correct. Mm -hmm. Who would be politically correct? Mm -hmm. So uh, I know, but uh, oh, let's see. The uh, okay, actually, we we got the. David Cronenberg and Cosmopolitan were the, but uh, actually they said a lot of, some of the things really said some important things on, at Cosmopolis though, like oh. David Cronenberg. Was I actually I like him because you mentioned he's a photographer. He said the essence of cinema is a human face speaking. That's an interesting comment. Yeah, no, it, it, a photographer would talk about that like, because there was another person, another great photographer who we went to see the collection of at the, um, at the Getty Museum with Herb Ritz. Yes. Was basically, a, he was a photographer first and a cinematographer and director second, but people liked to work with him because he, he made the actors look magnificent. And everything that he did, he basically, MTV exists today because of Herb Ritz. It was his early work as a director. You remember the early, like, Janet Jackson? Yeah, he made videos. MTV. Yeah. I mean, totally. I mean, he's responsible for Michael Jackson's... Um, uh, a lot of Michael Jackson's Did best he? work, yeah. Oh. But uh, we got and in this movie, Cosmopolis, um, I thought this was kind of curious. And this is Robert Pattinson, as many of you know from the Twilight series, uh, talking about his preparation for the part. He said, "I spent 15 days in my hotel worrying. I no longer knew what I was doing. I went to David to talk about the film, and he said, let 'Let's start, and we'll see.' It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> as an actor, I, I suppose that's uh, is that supposed to be reassuring." Anyway, it was impossible to prepare for this character as I usually would. I liked the script because it was lyrical. We felt like we were singing a song, and it presents a world that makes no sense and needs to be purified. Yeah, but uh, basically, uh, David Cronenberg, though I love Cos Cosmopolis, evokes the ghost of capitalism. We almost directly quoted Karl Marx's manifesto. There's a reason. Oh, really? There's a reason for this because here, this is a press. But this I got. This is English, folks. It's been there since the day one. Because as soon as I found it in English, I put it up. Uh, basically, New York is in a turmoil. The age of capitalism is drawing to a close. 
Eric Parker is a high financial golden boy, dies in a white limousine while a visitor from the President of the United States paralyzes Manhattan. But it does it in Los Angeles every time he drops by to raise money. <laughs> but does. Eric Parker has one, we're going to try this from, from the soldier's point of view, has one capitalistic obsession. Getting a haircut at the barbers at the other end of the city. Yeah. See, what is this? It's like the end of the world is coming and you have to go get your hair cut. Yeah, at the end of the, as the day goes by, chaos sets in as he watches helplessly as his empire is about to collapse. Also, he is sure that someone is trying to assassinate him. When, where? He is about to live the most decisive 24 hours in his life. <laughs> Ooh, okay, what it is... The is power that, of words. And they said what David Cronenberg did is he take a, took a book that is impossible mm -hmm. to adapt to film and expands and enhances a unique body of work haunted by themes that are considered obsessive or marginal. Basically, yeah, he does everything he does is excessive. That's why he's a great photographer. <laughs> yeah, so, but you talk about, can we say it is totally anti-American and anti-capitalist, which means it's why it's at the tail end of the thing, because it could win the award now. Well, you know, part of it is, is they seem to be remembered more towards the end, you know, when they're viewing them towards the end. It's like yeah. it's fresh in their mind. And, you know, the, like the opening night um, film, we always think, oh, that's prestigious because opening and closing night, right? But the hard part with opening night is it's so early that they forget about you. Yeah. Right? And the quote of the day from Norman Lloyd, you just need to remove one of an actor's five senses to intensify his acting. Which, I mean, like I told you before, I've worked with Norman, Norman Lloyd on the Sabotage, which is an Alfred Hitchcock thing. But uh, I, well, I, even though I'd work with a gentleman, I actually, like we tell people, see the hair, what type of character do you think I played in Sabotage? Ooh, I can only guess. Could it have been a blonde-haired, Nordic card-carrying Nazi? I was a, that was a young Nazi, I was, you know, and, you know, I basically, I, I hang around looking menacing in my suit. I, so, but, you know, Norman White. God, he used to be the exact, he was a producer of Alfred Hitchcock Presents and a director. He's better, I, which I really didn't know, he's better known for the, in back of the camera side than he is in front of the camera side. The guy's still making in front of the camera stuff. So, uh, but he's 97 years old. I mean, we're talking Christopher Lee's going to have to go a bit to get the Norman Lloyd's bill. I mean, he's only booked for it until he's 95 working. Lloyd is still at 97 and still looks like he can go on. He does not look like he's a man in his 90s. He looks like he's a man in his 50s. Oh, really? So, yeah, he used to play Nazis a lot in World War II, folks. A lot of Nazis because he was also light-haired and thin and Nordic looking. So, <laughs> so don't put it in English. But, and what's the weather like in Cannes? Uh, it's like I said yesterday, if you're bothering pay attention, it sucks. I mean, thunderstorms, cold wind. And it, 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 um, it is basically going to be this way for the next, until through the race in Monaco, which is, a lot of people are split. They've already Cons, gone over to Monaco. They've gone over there, or they went to Geneva, where the, you know, where the De Grasso people had, you know, people dressed in their jewelry for on fire. Well, you know, it's funny, because he's like, well, what's going on on the party front? Which is usually what we sit there and cover, and it's kind of like, well, it's really kind of quiet on the party front, because other than the movies, where they do the photo call and then they're doing their premieres and then they do their after parties. You know, other than probably what the VIP room is probably having things, they have things nightly over there in cons, um, and the pavilions are having different things, but it seems relatively quiet. Oh yeah, because uh, basically the actors and attendants, basically, um, you look for the Americans over there, you know, you... The list still looks Sam, just about have, as long. We have Sam Riley, well, a lot of them, Kelly Rutherford, Walter Sells, but you look at the English, the ones with English names are almost all vanished now, though. Mm. Elijah Wood, Bonnie Wright, but it, it, it is more and more with the people that are in there for the awards now. Mm. Which, of course, because, see, part of it is, is if you're expecting to get an award, you definitely want Go get it. Well, yeah, because you want to be there, but mm -hmm. mostly, most of the Americans are totally gone, so, you know, because they, okay. Well, because even, like, on my side, from the different people um, that I'm, I'm doing, it's like most of them, it's like they took off to Paris, they took off to Italy, they're mm -hmm. back in L.A. They, they got, um, they, the big things are going on in Geneva right now mm -hmm. and in Monte Carlo, so, and, uh, and Men in Black opened up here, which we're probably going to end up with. See this afternoon before the race change. 
<laughs> I know. But uh, no, but um, that, there's a lot of stuff though on the daily. I love that. Um, uh, and, and, and actually, here's a guy basically in his competition film, which is so he's probably not going to win because this is definitely not, uh, this would not be a winner. In my film, I show that there, um, that a man can't do everything, but he can try. Well, not in the United States, you wouldn't. You don't even try anymore. It's the fog. It's a, they tell the story of a railroad worker who during World War II is accused of treason hunted down by two resistant members. Uh, is a Ukrainian director accompanied by his film crew, you know, so um, I, I wanted to make this film for 10 years and basically, he, they, they have problem making, okay, even if it is a politically correct independent film in a, in a foreign country, it's really hard, we know, the, um, was it some of the people, we went to see some of the Oscar screening things and it took like seven, and, well I hope it doesn't take seven years for my next movie. You know? And this is a guy that basically won, he's won the grand prize at the Cannes Film Festival. So you would think, you know, if you want a Palme d'Or, you should be able to get money. No, because it's dried up. You would think you'd be able to after a Palme d'Or. It doesn't work that way. Some people, what happens is, is that um, if they, if the, if it's from a country that does, it's broke at the moment. Independent movies are are shrinking. Uh, what you see is a lot of these independent movies this year are actually got big name talent with them, and that means they got they come in knowing. If you book a book a big name talent like Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis does a lot of little work. But uh, if you start booking those people in your films, it's easier to sell the film to television. Mm. It's like, uh, was it the, the backseat car, was it Last Ride or something with Kirsten Stewart? That uh, that was sold before it ever made it to cons. Oh, so. You know, so they made their production costs back, so it's going, it means it's uh, bringing help, whereas um, a lot of other things. Oh, actually, I have an audio from this one. Do you have an audio from that actually, one? Actually, I do. I, sometimes I, you, I, I never know what I'm going to get until I actually look because I, the, the press, basically, the press side of the Cannes Film Festival is really great with the stuff that they put up. I just, last year we did this, I spent the time translating. It, it was you know, all translated. I'm sitting there This going, year it's better because you don't have to sit there and translate it as much. There's still stuff that's only in French. Yeah, but that's um, when I have fun. I sit there and I do, I, as a, I do not speak French. That's just for somebody else. I cannot do a French dialect. No matter how Actually, what I do is I do Lorenzo. I do uh, Fernando Lamas doing his French accent, which was not very good. He was doing Charles Boyer. So. Oh boy! But um, okay. Uh, so far, what are the highlights of this week? Oh, you want? We want oh. We're gonna get the highlights of this past week, which are numerous. Well, actually, this is kind of like cons in general. Yeah. Which is these are the highlights talked about thus far, which is Jackie Chan and his on again, off again, and on again retirement from action movies. Well, he's back. He's not, yeah, he, he, the, the press is still, I, I didn't read the press release. I told people the day I got the press release, he said he was not retiring from action movies. He was returning to the way he used to be, which was, you know, uh, uh, basically like stereo comedy, which was serious with comedy and era, and not as much action because mm -hmm. I break and I don't heal as fast. So. Yes. And Kristen Stewart from, as you know her mainly from the Twilight series, and she's topless. She smiles, then she smiles. Yeah, because the, basically the topless went, <laughs> Well, you know, the topless was what? You got to see this. You got to see You her, got to see a bare shoulder. You got to see a bare shoulder, and then her being naughty off camera. You got I mean, to, okay, you got to see two bare we'll shoulders. We'll put it this way. I did things in the 1950s over at AIP that had more action than this movie's got in it. And but what we're talking about on the road. On the road, okay. yeah. And Sean Penn is pissed off at the world, gets $400,000 for Haiti, and he's still pissed off at the world. But here's the question. When is Sean Penn... The guy's got an Oscar, too, and he's actually... He's a really a good actor, but he just simply... He just is, you know, he takes the Brando brooding bit to the extreme. Yeah. And Nicole Kidman and Zac Efron, and what Nicole did to Zac in the movie. The yeah. paper boy. Oh yeah, that's really a big one. And, oh, and, and, and basically, uh, you would think that Nicole Kidman has forgot one very important thing in life because she looks like she's trying to revitalize a career, but what is she totally forgetting? Nicole, you already have an Oscar. I know, and you're not going to get a second one with these roles. They generally, okay. You already have the Oscar. You, so. get, you, you, know, you get an Oscar if you're a Nicole Kidman or a Charlize Theron 
because you're doing something that you haven't done before. But if you revisit the same character, they don't give you an Oscar mm -hmm. for the same character unless you're Johnny Depp, which he'll probably get an Oscar for, you know, eventually for playing this. He played the same character all the time. He's Johnny you know, Depp. part of it is people love Johnny Depp. Yeah. And, um, okay, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but you know what? If you look at his history of how well his movies have done, people love Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Depp. I yes, mean, it is. Okay, it is all about and, him. And that, um, oh, and the Pirates. And the Pirates, which Pirate, the pirate that, that Pirate movie is getting ready, so he's got a long... I mean, he's only in his late 40s, he had a long career ahead of him, but he wasn't at, he wasn't at times this year. Oh, that's true, we didn't see anything. And yeah. Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey <coughs> was everywhere for like three days. He was in his simply look, and then his um, not so, then his McConaughey look that you know was his more. I mean, he looked like he hadn't, a pop, he may have been in it. Well, he's got, he got a new kid. Hey, he probably didn't have any sleep, because the, the pictures were, here's the funny part is, when Matthew McConaughey was just getting the cons, the pictures of him, maybe that's what it was. He hadn't had any sleep. And he actually went to cons to get sleep. But <laughs> yeah, and then he find looked like the day they held the press conference for his, uh, I think the second, he's on, he's, he's, in, in, three, the second, three he's in three movies. I think it was the third movie that, that he was in that they held the with Paperboy or something. We have to go back and look. Yeah, that, that was the one time. yesterday mm -hmm. with Zach Efron again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Um, uh, like Nicole Kidman, I think, is in three of them also. It's a really a big deal to get in multiple movies that are picked. Basically, um, it, it does show your range, but Bruce Willis half having another movie. <laughs> so, well, he, Bruce Willis is another character. People love to see Bruce Willis. Yeah. Yeah. But, so. um, yeah, but like I said, there's no, we have no parties to talk about, but, so we basically ran, ran it on about what's been going on this week in the Daily, which is why it is the Friday wrap-up, so I guess until... Tomorrow when we'll have more winners for you, hopefully. That's right, we will. This is Old Camp. And this is Not a Spring Chick. And for more information, you can go to... www.montybubbles.net on the net. We actually can see Cosmopolis' press material, his production notes in English. They only have three right. that are in English. And um, yeah, the people, the, basically the movies aren't coming out until later in the fall, so they just didn't bother with doing mm -hmm. a press kit yet. But, uh, and you can go to www. Uh, dot MBN News Video Web on the net because newsvideoweb.com on the net because that's where all the material is being put up as fast as we can in a smaller form. The other site is the huge site. This is the MBN News Video Web is the smaller, faster site. Mm -hmm. And of course, for more up to date information, you can always go to Facebook for Monty Bubbles Network or to Twitter for Monty at Monty Bubbles. And of course, wherever you're watching us, please subscribe to us. And Thank you for following our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you once again for over 250 million links on the internet.